In this video, Janet Antone will teach and share about the art of beating as a personal journey and a meditative mental wellness practice. Hi, my name is Janet Antone. I'm from Oneida Nation of the Thames. I'm Bear Clan, um, and I'm going to be going through my beating techniques with you. I like to work off of a surface that has some kind of lip or a rim, just so if my beads spill, they don't go everywhere on the floor because that would be sad. <laughs> the next step is I have my thread here with all of my tools that I'll need at the ready. Two pairs of scissors, a mini pair of pliers here. I also use bead wax with my beading. This conditions the thread, helps cut down on the fraying, just because as you're passing through the beads, you're gonna get friction. So this helps to stop it from knotting and fraying. I carry a lighter to singe the ends of the thread to help secure the piece in place. Once everything's laid out, I then figure out what I'm feeling for the day. I'm the type of beater who likes to sit and work on a piece until it's done. But I also let my beadwork speak to me. Um, so it usually tells me when to take a break. My thread will start to break. The beads will snap sometimes. Yeah, things just kind of start to go a little haywire. Then I know it's time to set the piece down, take a break, and then come back to it. My particular journey uh, started as like a mental health journey. So I was struggling with um, anxiety and depression. And I went to visit my friend and I was telling her about my problems and how I was feeling. And uh, she just took me aside and she said, I'm going to teach you how to be. No, no, no. I don't want to, like, I'm not going to be good at it. I'm really clumsy. The beads are too small. I had all these reasons. And her being like, uh, you know, my very assertive Mohawk friend, she said, no, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. So she sat me down, kind of just handed me the supplies and then talked me through it. And ever since that day, I have not put beading down. It was like really a transformative experience for me. It helped me connect to my roots and uh, to myself as, as an indigenous person. And it really helped me um, like find my way to root myself within my, my community. We weren't um, traditional, so we didn't go to longhouse, um, you know, we didn't practice a lot of the ceremonies. And so with beading, it helped me find that place. And it also helped me connect with a lot of uh, community members who I may not have met with and been able to connect with any other way. Everything I do within my beading journey, I keep my, my people and my community in mind. Um, I want to do right by them and I want to make sure that I'm honoring, honoring them and making them proud. It didn't make it go away. Like it didn't solve my uh, mental health struggles. It instead allowed me to connect with myself and uh, be able to identify what I'm feeling. Um, now for me, like when I sit and bead, 
it very much feels like ceremony. It stops me from going too far off of my, my path. Um, and a lot of times it gives me clarity, you know, maybe the thing I'm, I'm fretting about really isn't that big of a deal, you know, um, but I just needed to, to take this step back. And I feel like that's what beating allows me to do is take the step back. My best advice for students would be to find something that you're passionate about that isn't necessarily about making money, um, but rather something that like feeds your soul, like fills your cup in another way, just try and find the community within your interest um, and make sure that you allow yourself space to maybe not be so good at it at first, um, but just try because you never know where that path could lead you.